The constellation of Gemini contains 85 stars of naked eye visibility. Its most famous members, Castor and Pollux, the Gemini twins, are mythological characters, but the actual stars are physically very different from each other. Indeed, in astrology, it's thought that a Gemini is constantly juggling a variety of pursuits. They are indeed the social butterflies of the zodiac. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we return to our constellation series for a visit to the Gemini constellation and discover what secrets it may reveal. So let's get to it. I'll be honest, I'm not much of a social butterfly myself. As a Pisces, I'm more obsessed with structure, order and reason. But be that as it may, we all know that when we talk about Gemini, two names always pop out of the box, Castor and Pollux. The perennial Gemini twins are two of the most recognisable stars in our skies. But strangely, not Alpha, but Beta Geminorum or Pollux is actually the brightest star in Gemini, and to be fair, by some distance too. The second brightest, of course, is Alpha Geminorum or Castor. Castor's by designation as Alpha is thought to have arisen because when the author of the by designation, Johann Bayer, assigned the designations in 1603, it turns out he didn't carefully distinguish which of the two was the brightest star. We could focus the entire video on these two stars, but I think that would be overkill seeing as we've already looked at both stars in some detail before. And indeed, stay tuned to our little channel over the next few months, where we will be visiting the incredible Castor system once more. In brief then, Alpha Geminorum, or Castor, is a very complicated sextuple star system that lies some 52 light years from Earth, whereas Pollux, or Beta Geminorum, is an orange-hued giant star of magnitude 1.14 and it lies some 34 light years away. Pollux is an extrasolar planet revolving around it, known as Thestius. To find Gemini in the sky, the best way is to use Orion and draw an imaginary line between Rigel bottom right and Betelgeuse top left. We then find Castor and Pollux lying to the north, and Pollux is the more southerly of the two, and Castor the more northerly. You might remember to Castor your eyes north to remember it, if you'll excuse the pun. Continuing on, Sigma Geminorum, or Wasat, is 124 light years away and is a binary star with a primary K giant, orange star, of magnitude plus 3.5. Something akin to the star of Arcturus, the secondary star is, well, what exactly is it? As a single line spectroscopic binary, Sigma Geminorum's spectrum can only actually be determined for one of its stars, so its partner remains something of a mystery to this day. One of the most beautiful sights we might find in Gemini is probably the Medusa Nebula, a planetary nebula discovered in 1955. 15,000 light years from Earth, it has an area of the sky of approximately the same size as the full moon. As the nebula is so large, its surface brightness is actually very low, with surface magnitudes lying between plus 16 and plus 25. The central star of the planetary nebula is a very hot white dwarf, and it's probably a remnant of a previously very powerful star. Despite having this low surface brightness, Medusa does remain visible to the unaided eye under very, very dark skies. It's certainly a very beautiful, if indeed an uneasy sight, isn't it? The star of Zeta Geminorum, or Mechbuda, is an interesting star as it is a multiple star system whose primary is a yellow supergiant and it lies 1200 light years away. Its radius stretches to 60 times the solar radius, which makes it approximately 220,000 times the size of the Sun. It shares space with three visible companions, and one of which is a magnitude 7.6 star, which is visible in binoculars and small amateur telescopes. Epsilon Geminorum, or Mebsuta, is a double star which also includes a primary yellow supergiant, but this time lies some 900 light years from Earth. In this curious photo, we observe one of the constellation's most impressive objects, the so-called Geminga X-ray source, one of the most powerful X-ray sources in our section of the entire galaxy. Geminga is thought to be a neutron star approximately 550 light years away. Indeed, in this almost crazy to observe diagram, we can see just how powerful the Geminga source it really is. It certainly seems to show it in great galaxial perspective. Curiously, Gemini also features in the history of our solar system. In the first instance, William Herschel discovered Uranus on 13th of March 1781, when the planet was actually located very near to Eta Geminorum. Indeed, even later, in 1930, Clyde Tombaugh exposed a series of photographic plates centred on Sigma Geminorum and consequently discovered Pluto. It seems that the stars of Gemini like to hang around and dare I say gossip about the key discoveries we make on Earth. Gamma Geminorum, formerly named Alena, is the third brightest star in Gemini after Castor and Pollux, 
with an apparent vision or magnitude of plus 1.9. It's only slightly dimmer than Castor, and indeed ranks 43rd brightest star in the night sky. It's located at a distance of roughly 109 light years away. In this list, we see the brightest stars of Gemini and how they rank individually on a list of brightest stars in our night sky. Alena itself is a star in transition and is exhausting the supply of hydrogen in its core and entering the subgiant stage. The spectrum matches the stellar classification of A0 subgiant. One of the brightest stars in our immediate neighborhood compared to the Sun, Gamma Geminorum or Alena, has 2.8 times the mass and 3.3 times our solar radius. The constellation is bordered by Taurus to the west and Cancer to the east, with Auriga and Lynx to the north, and Monoceros and Canis Minor to the south, with Orion to the southwest. All of this makes Gemini the 30th largest constellation by area, covering some 1.25% of the night sky. Without a Gemini designation, as it's far too dim, the star of HD 50554 is a single sun-like star, with an exoplanet companion all lying within the borders of the constellation. Invisible to the naked eye, the system is located at a distance of 101 light years from the Sun, but it is drifting slowly closer to us and has a radial velocity of minus 4 km a second. It's interesting because it's an almost identical Sun analogue, with 1.06 masses of the Sun and 1.07 times its radius. It makes it only slightly brighter than our star, and what's more is that the star also has a planet that is likely a super Jupiter lying some 2.339 astronomical units from the star. While this likely renders it just outside the habitable zone, theoretically some moons, maybe with thick atmospheres or internal heating of some source, could quite easily still experience areas with water flow. Many viewers of our channel probably know now just how excited I get when large Jupiter planets are found to be close to or within the habitable zone of a star. Let me explain. Focusing on Earth-like worlds is great, sure, but as far as we know, Jupiter planets boast many, many more moons for life to thrive on. For each Earth, a Jupiter-sized world offers perhaps 4 to 10 potential moons based on our solar system. And this particular planet is even larger than Jupiter with an estimated 5.85 Jovian masses. I guess the only time will tell just how many moons a world of that size may have captured and have orbiting it. Another star, HD 59686, also lies within Gemini. And there's another sun-like star, with this time with another super Jupiter lying this time within its habitable zone. On this occasion, however, the star is unfortunately now moving off the main sequence, so only life that is currently inhabiting it will inevitably shortly, astronomically speaking at least, experience a very large red awakening sooner rather than later. In our final graphic today, we imagine a scene from the star of Gamma Geminorum, or Alena. Both stars Castor and Pollux would shine brightly in its sky, although slightly dimmer in Pollux's case, and ever so slightly brighter in the case of Castor, which would become the brightest star in Gemini from Alena. We also observe that the white star is slowly growing, and we see a certain orange, yellow and red hue developing within the star. Gemini is a beautiful constellation in the northern sky with two major protagonists, known as the Gemini twins of Castor and Pollux. Other stars of interest include Alena, a currently developing A-type star, and Sigma Geminorum, which is a binary pairing with a mystery partner. The Medusa Nebula is dim, but incredibly beautiful, and also lies within the constellation, and the constellation also houses one of the brightest X-ray sources in the galaxy, thought to be the neutron star of Geminga. Within the constellation also lies a replica sun-like star, hiding a super Jupiter in its habitable zone. The constellation of Gemini has been important throughout human history, helping with the discoveries of planets within our solar system, while its major stars watched us from afar. Let's continue to talk about, observe and celebrate this wonderful constellation. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further you could consider joining the channel or becoming a member and alternatively buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks for those of you who have already done so and if you have any videos or subjects you'd like to see brought to life don't forget to let me know in the comments below and it could be your idea next week that shows up. Take good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well and I'll see you on the next one.